Hello everybody, this video is on the forces between two parallel current carrying conductors. In order to understand the forces between a pair of parallel straight current carrying conductors, we need to revisit the concept of the motor effect. The motor effect refers to the phenomenon when a current carrying conductor is placed within an external magnetic field. When this occurs, the conductor is acted upon by a force, specifically an electromagnetic force. When a current flows through a straight conductor, a radial magnetic field is produced. We can use our right hand grip rule to determine the direction of this radial magnetic field. Now, when another current carrying straight conductor is placed within this magnetic field that's produced by the first conductor, it will be acted upon by an electromagnetic force. And this phenomenon is known as a motor effect. The strength of the magnetic field produced by the first conductor is given by the equation mu naught times by i divided by 2 pi r, where mu naught is the magnetic permeability constant, and i is the current flowing through the first conductor. The variable r is the distance of the second current current conductor away from the first conductor, which produces the external magnetic field. Now, we can derive a new mathematical equation for the force between these two conductors due to the motor effect. The equation for the motor effect, as we've discussed in the, another video, is force equal to ILB sine theta. Current in this equation refers to the current in the second conductor. L is the length of the conductor, and B is the strength of the external magnetic field, which is produced by the first conductor and theta is the angle between the conductor and the radial magnetic field, which in this case is always perpendicular, so theta is 90 degrees. We can substitute B with the previous expression as we discussed. So force equals to ILB, B here is mu naught times by I divided by 2 pi R, sine 90 degrees. Now, notice how I have two variables for current in the same equation, but the two currents here refer to the two different conductors. The first I refers to the second conductor, that's called the I2, and the second I, which came from the magnetic field strength equation, refers to the current flowing through the first conductor, because it's the first conductor that produces the magnetic field, which is necessary for the motor effect. Let's call this I1. We can simplify this expression by rewriting it as force over L equals to mu naught over 2 pi multiplied by I1, I2 in the numerator and divided by R in the denominator. And sine 90 disappears because it's equals to 1. And this forms our new mathematical equation for the force between two parallel straight conductors. While the second conductor experiences a force due to the magnetic field of the first conductor, it's important to notice that when you have a current passing through a second conductor, it also produces its own radial magnetic field. In this case, it will be going around in this way. Due to this external magnetic field produced by the second conductor, the first current current conductor will also experience the motor effect force. And that's why the force between two parallel straight current current conductors is mutual. The first conductor will experience a force due to the ma magnetic field produced by the second conductor. And at the same time, the second conductor will experience the same force due to the magnetic field produced by the first conductor. Let's analyze the equation that we just derived. On the left hand side, we have the force per meter or length of the conductor. And this is proportional to the magnitude of the currents. That means if there are more currents or amperes flowing through each or both of the conductors, then the force will become stronger. The force per meter is also inversely proportional to the distance of separation. If the two conductors are brought closer together, then the force will increase. If they are brought further apart, then the force per meter will decrease in strength. An important concept in this topic is to know that the direction of the two currents flowing through the two conductors will determine the direction or the nature of the force. The force between the two conductors is attractive if the current flowing through the two conductors are in the same direction. And this is better visualized when you look at the conductors from the side view. 
When the currents are flowing the same direction, their radial magnetic fields, as determined by the right hand grip rule, will also flow in the same direction. And as a result, the two magnetic fields will join together, allowing the two conductors to experience an attractive force. In the first image, the two currents shown by the dots are flowing out of the screen or out of the page, whereas the bottom diagram, the two currents are both flowing into the page. Regardless of where they're flowing, as long as the two currents are flowing the same direction, the force between them will always be attractive. Conversely, the force between the two conductors is repulsive if the currents flowing through them are in the opposite direction. The radial magnetic fields produced by these two currents are also in the opposite direction. When you're given a scenario where there are two parallel straight conductors, but they are of unequal lengths, the length in the equation that we just derived will always refer to the shorter conductor's length. So, regardless of how long the longer conductor is, the magnitude of the force will always be determined by the length of the shorter conductor. Now, let's put that to practice. We have two very long parallel wires, each carrying a current of 9 amps in opposite directions. These wires are separated by a distance of 4 centimeters. Calculate the force per meter between the two wires. So the equation is force over length equals to mu naught divided by 2 pi multiplied by I1, I2 divided by R or D, which is the distance between the two straight conductors. We want to find the force per meter, which is F over L. Mu naught is the magnetic permeability constant. So that's 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 divided by 2 pi, multiply by the two current sizes, and we are given that the two wires will each carry a current of 9 amps. So here we've got 9 multiplied by 9, divided by r, which is the distance of separation. Uh, keep in mind we need to use the SI unit for distance, which is meters. So the 4 centimeters becomes 0.04 meters. And this gives us a force per meter of 4.05 times 10 to the power of minus 4 newton per meter. Now remember, for forces, because this is a vector quantity, besides the magnitude, we should also indicate the direction. The direction is given by the relative directions of the currents. We are told by the question that the currents are flowing in the opposite direction. If the currents are flowing in the opposite direction, the force will be repulsive. So in this case, the force per meter for these two wires will be away from each other. If the currents are flowing in the same direction, then here it would be towards one another. We have three parallel straight current current conductors of equal length, and these are placed side by side on a table as shown. The net force acting on conductor Y, which is the middle conductor, is zero. Determine the direction and magnitude of current flowing through conductor Z. So at the moment, the diagram shows us the distances between the three conductors as well as the currents flowing through X and Y. And we are also given that the currents flowing through X and Y are flowing in the same direction, which tells us that there's a force attracting them or bringing them closer together. Let's call that F. In order for the net force on Y to be zero, a downward force towards Z must be present of equal magnitude to balance out the force due to conductor X. So that tells us the force between conductor Y and Z is also of an attractive one. In other words, conductor Y and Z are also brought together by the electromagnetic force between them. Consequently, the current flowing through conductor Z will also flow in the same direction as conductor Y which is essential for producing this attractive force. As we discussed earlier, the force acting on conductor Y due to conductor Z must be the same magnitude as the one due to conductor X. So we can find this force by using an equation F over L equals to mu naught divided by 2 pi times by I1, I2 divided by R. So the force over L is equal to mu naught over 2 pi times by 3 amps times by 5 amps 
divided by 0.1 meters. And this is equal to the force over length between y and z as well. So that's going to be equal to mu naught divided by 2 pi times by the current in conductor y, which is 5 amps, and times by the current in conductor z, that's called the iz, and divided by r, which is the distance between conductor y and z, so that's 0.15 meters. We can cancel out mu naught over 2 pi on both sides, and we can cancel out 5 amps in the numerator as well. This will leave us with 3 over 0.1 equals to iz divided by 0.15. And by rearranging this equation, multiplying 0.15 on both sides, iz will be equal to 4.5 amps. The SI definition of an ampere was originally defined using a pair of parallel conductors. Before 2019, the definition of ampere is that the ampere is a constant current which, if maintained in two straight parallel conductors of infinite length of negligible circular cross section, when placed one meter apart in a vacuum, will produce between these conductors a force of equal to 2 times 10 to the power of minus 7 newton per meter of length. The definition of an ampere in this old definition is based on the magnitude of electromagnetic force produced between a pair of parallel conductors when current passing through it is equal to 1 ampere. We can use this equation to understand why the force is exactly 2 times 10 to the power of minus 7 newton per meter. Force over length is given by mu zero, which is 4 pi times 10 to the power of minus 7 divided by 2 pi. And when 1 ampere of current is passing through both parallel conductors, both currents will be equal to 1. And this is divided by a distance of 1 meter apart, as quoted in the definition. So divide by 1. And this will give us a force over length of exactly 2 times 10 to the power of minus 7 newton per meter. The new SI definition of an ampere is more simple and is defined in terms of the charge. The definition is as follows. A current of 1 ampere is 1 coulomb of charge, which is Q, passing through a given point in 1 second, which is given by time. This is described by the simple equation that we learned previously. 